you're struggling to make Microsoft lists actually useful, then this is the place for you. We're going to have a look at how to make lists into a task or project management tool. So have a look at how to notify people when they're assigned a task, how to change a view so they only see their tasks, and then how to use Power Automate to do a couple of things that's missing. So one being reminders, reminding you of upcoming tasks, and two being recurrent. So if you've got a task that you need to do on a schedule, once you've completed it, it'll create another one, say monthly or quarterly. So watch until the end for all that information. And remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new video comes out from me. I've got new videos on Teams and Microsoft 365 coming out every Tuesday. But why bother listening to me? I'm founder of MeTime. We now help organizations with modern workplace transformations with Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365 formerly a transformation manager for a Fortune 500 company, I saved employees hours per week per person in time savings from the approach that we recommend. If you're interested in doing that for your organization, then stick around to the end for some more information about how to get in touch. Okay, so why are we even looking at making a to-do list or project management app in lists, why don't we just use something else? So if you've not seen the previous video on all of the project management apps and task management apps that are in the Microsoft 365 suite, then go ahead and watch that first as a bit of background. And that might explain why we're looking to use lists to be a task manager at all. But briefly, uh, Planner is usually the go-to place if you need to do shared tasks or some sort of project management, but Planner's got no recurrence of tasks. So if you've got something that you wanna keep on going, then Planner can't really help you right now. To Do has got recurrence, but it's got no custom fields. So you're literally just stuck with a list of tasks rather than having, a, you know, what you might have in Excel if you've created that already, a big, you know, a big long table of all the fields that you want to keep track of to do can't do that for you, at least in a visual sense. Excel, if you've got it in Excel, doesn't really have any notifications. And if you try and do some automation on Excel, at least I have found in the past that the automation sort of locks itself out of the sheet. Although admittedly it has been a while since I tried to do some automations on Excel using Power Automate. And then lists is, got all of the stuff that I just mentioned. So the ability to have it look how you want, broadly speaking, in terms of a table view, but without changing some settings and without some power automate, it doesn't notify people when you assign them a task. It doesn't have any reminders of a task coming up and it doesn't have any recurrence. But those are relatively easy things that we can quickly sort out. And once you've done it once, you can then just reuse those automations. So that's what we're gonna have a look at right now. Okay, so here we are in list. And this is one that I made for a client, um, which is why it's set out like it is, because this is how she'd already set out something that she had in Excel that she's using to keep track of documents that need to be reviewed on a certain cadence. And she wanted to track that the team was updating those documents and storing them uh, in the right location. Uh, and so they would use this list with a couple of tweaks um, to make that happen. So it's sort of a task uh, to update a document, which is why some of the things are named differently to how you might name them, but the gist is the same. You can create this as to be any sort of uh, task list or project management tool. So uh, we've got ID and title. Uh, title I've renamed to document name because like I said, it was uh, this whole thing is to keep track of documents. And I guess there's some basic things that we need to make it into a task manager. So we need an assigned to column and that's just a person column. So when you come in to uh, add your column, you're just gonna click person uh, and then I've named it assigned to its personal group. Uh, and importantly, when we come on to the automations, I struggled when I allowed multiple people to be selected. So if you leave that off, everything I'm gonna show you is gonna work. If you turn that on, uh, I've not been able to find any documentation to make that work, but uh, I am not a Power Automate expert. Um, so if you are, then you know how to make that work, then let me know in the comments below. Link to files, so I did a hyperlink column. So again, if you wanna uh, add that in, it's add in and then choose hyperlink, create the name of the column. So I called it link to file. Um, so you can put a hyperlink into another document library or wherever you're storing that document. Um, there is an attachments bit in 
lists by default. So if you click on the actual list item, there's always attachments by default. But again, we don't want to be moving stuff around. We don't want to actually attach it to the list. We just want to hyperlink so we keep something in the same place and we've still got you know all the version history and everything in the right place. So you don't need a linked file, but it's worth having. The things you need to make the list uh, work as a task list are obviously assigned to because you need to know who's doing the task and the due date about when you want them to have completed it. Um, for if you want something to do with recurrence, obviously you need to know how often that is going to occur. So when I work with this client, we either needed to do monthly, quarterly or semi-annually and that is there just a choice column and you can add those choices, or so I've got a one-off as well, uh, without any recurrence at all. Um, and that's just adding a choice column. So again, to add a choice column, you just come in, click choice, and then you've got these little tablet things, whatever they're called, um, little coloured bubbles, where you can then enter your choice. So that's where you'd put in the monthly, etc. Uh, don't want people to add values manually because we're using it for automation, so we don't want them to mistype anything uh, or add another column that we haven't put in the automation, so uh, that's all there. Status, we want open or closed, so we know whether someone's done uh, that task or not. Open, closed, ongoing or incomplete uh, was the things we had there. I would just say just have open or closed, if, unless you really want to know and get people to update if it's ongoing there. And we've got some conditional formatting to make some of the uh, dates show up if we're overdue, but um, it's starting to feel out a bit more like, you know, we can sort of manage the project now. We know uh, what needs to be done, when it needs to be done by, and who's doing it, and uh, the list's starting to look okay. So most of this video is just to go through how to make it a, some additional functionality to make it more useful. First thing we want to probably do is change the uh, view. So we can create a new view, which we want to do as a list, and I'll just call it uh, due in 30 days two, because I've already got one. Create it, and you notice that hasn't done anything. Uh, it's just made that name. So then what we want to do is move some filters around, and we can either do that on the table itself and then go and save that view, or we can edit the current view and then jump into the old view of SharePoint. I'm not really sure why this is still around because it is a bit jarring, but it looks a bit odd. But basically the only reason we want to jump into this bit is so we can do a little bit of, uh, not code, but uh, so you need to know what to type in. Um, so we want to show items in this view only when the following is true, when the assigned to is equal to, and then you can see what he typed it there, but some square brackets with me in it, and that's going to show you just things that are assigned to you. And when the due date is less than or equal to square brackets today plus 30, because in this instance we want to you know we want to know stuff that was coming up in the next month, uh, but you can you know change that time to whatever you want to see. Uh, if it's more fast moving, you might just want the next seven days, say. Uh, and we only want stuff that was still outstanding. So when column status is not equal to closed, let me just type in closed. So we want to make sure that's and I'll scroll the way down and click OK. And then we just get things that are assigned to us uh, that are still open and due in the next 30 days or less. So it's still showing up ones that are overdue, which is what we want to see. So that view is going to be really easy uh, to use. We can set that as the default view if we wanted to. So set current view as default. And that's because we put me in that section, whoever logs in is just going to see their own tasks as the default view with stuff they still need to do. So it's cutting down that list, but we've still got a, the history of everything that happened before. We can enter some conditional formatting on the date, but I'm not going to go through that because that's relatively uh, easy. You probably get another video to show you uh, conditional formatting quite quickly. So what I want to go through is the rules and the power automations to make this really work as a task manager. So in automate, this is only shows up in the uh, web app, I believe, in Teams, it, the automation button isn't there right now. And we're just going to click on manage rules for now. 
It's because I've already set these up. So what we want to do is notify someone when we've created an item and assigned it to them. And then also we need to think about, well, if we've changed the assignment, we need to notify the new person that's been assigned as well. So we need two rules. So if we click into this one, we can see relatively easy in the rules bit of lists. So it says when a new item is created, send an email to, and then we're going to pick assigned to. So how we got to that? So we create a new rule. When a new item is created, when a new item is created, send email to enter name or email address and we just pick assigned to. That's how we created the first rule. And then when assigned to changes, send email to assigned to. So where we, how we created that one was create rule. When a column changes and when the assigned to changes, send email to assigned to. So they were notifying uh, both when something's new created and when something has changed. That's all in lists. Um, some things might be hidden and you might not realize, um, but that's how to make it uh, relatively more useful than just a list with being able to you know, notify people when they've been assigned stuff. Hi, so this is Editing Gav, and this one ran quite long, so I split it into two parts. First part is to, all to do with lists, second part is all to do with Power Automate. So if you're interested in the Power Automations bit, then watch this video next. It might not be out yet, depending on when you're watching this one. So if it is out, there'll be a link in the description below and a card. And if it's not out yet, then subscribe, hit the bell icon, get notified every time it comes out. If you like this video, remember to click the thumbs up button before you leave. It really helps support the channel with the algorithm. If you really liked it, consider buying me a beer using the link in the description below. It really helps support the channel and keep free content coming out on YouTube. Thanks for watching so far and hopefully we'll see you in the next part.